Hi everyone! It's been a while. Welcome back to the Knit California YouTube channel. My name is Leslie. I am Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and TikTok. And today we're going to be talking about the Irish knitting tour. It's been a while since I have sat down in front of the camera and uh, attempted to film anything. Um, if you're new here, hi, thank you for joining us today. I went on a trip to Ireland um, as part of a knitting tour. It was a 10 day tour that I extended to two weeks, um, starting in Dublin and going around uh, the southern part of Ireland. So we were in Cork, uh, Killarney, and areas all in between there. And um, I'm going to tell you all about it. I did get home and uh, immediately got a cold, test negative for COVID, but uh, if my voice is kind of like, Ugh. <laughs> That's why um, I'm mostly over it. It's just a little bit of like congestion and I need to like clear my voice a little bit. So apologies for all of that just to start out with. Um, I've been trying to think about the best way to go about telling you all of this information, everything that happened, showing you everything that I got. Um, and I just figured I'm going to sit down and um, talk about kind of the trip in order. Hopefully not spend too much time on one thing because telling you about two weeks is <laughs> a lot. Um, and I want to show you everything that is sitting on my bed over here. Um, it's a lot that I got. So I do want to preface all of this by saying um, if you don't like hauls and you don't like to see acquisitions, this is going to be very acquisition heavy. And before anyone comments, that's too much stuff. Oh honey, you shouldn't have bought all of that. Let's just pause because this was specifically a knitting related trip. So I was there with 20 other knitters and we were specifically visiting yarn shops, textile mills, sheep farms, like there was a lot of yarn to be seen on this tour and to be bought. So it just makes sense that there are a lot of things that I purchased. Number one, because I wanted them. Number two, to support the country that we were in. And number three, to support the small businesses that we were visiting. So yeah, if that's not your jam, uh, Maybe this video isn't for you and you can come back in my next podcast. But if you've been here for a while, I mean, you will know that uh, I show acquisitions, acquisitions in almost every episode, so I'm just going to start talking <laughs> and we're going to go through it. So this trip was planned by Rachel from Rachel is Knitting and her mom, Drenda Ms. Adventure Travel on Instagram. And they worked with a company called Knitting Tours. Now, Knitting Tours already puts on these types of tours in Ireland, Scotland, and Spain, I believe are the three locations uh, that they currently plan trips in. So they worked with that company to plan this route. And we specifically did the like Dublin and South of Ireland tour route, which was really fun. Of course, we all want to go back and do like all of the other tours that they offer, um, but that's for future tours. So I flew into Dublin a few days early. I wanted time to be able to spend kind of like by myself a little bit, tour the city, and that's exactly what I was able to do. There were already people there when I got there, so I got to meet some people before the trip even started. We went out to, you know, lunch and dinner all together. There were a couple touristy things that we did together, but on one of the days I was by myself, I had booked a walking tour of the city and um, entrance to Trinity College to see the Book of Kells, and that was honestly one of my favorite things that I did on the whole trip. I loved learning about Dublin, all of the history, uh, architecture, culture, and it was just fun to be able to walk around and see different parts of the city and um, being like told about it by a knowledgeable 
person who lives in Ireland, who lives in Dublin, tour guide. One of the fun parts about the walking tour was he actually took us to the building where This Is Knit is located. So I felt like I got a sneak peek of like first how to get there and also the yarn shop itself. Um, it wasn't open at the time because the tour was earlier in the morning, but I knew exactly where to go and how to get back there later in the day, which I did go back to later in the day. We actually ended up going to, or I, sorry, let me say, I actually ended up going to This Is Knit three separate times, once by myself, once with Rachel and her family once they arrived, and then the third time, the first day the tour started, uh, was a Monday. Uh, this Is Knit technically is not open on Mondays, but they made a special accommodation for our tour so that we could go and shop and see the store, because we weren't going to be in Dublin on any of the, like, actual opening hour days of the store. So while I'm talking about This Is Knit, let me show you what I picked up from there. I did uh, film and put together a reel about um, This Is Knit and the building that it's in. The history of that building is really cool. It was once a uh, Viscount's like city home for when he needed to be in the city to go to parliament meetings and stuff. Um, and this poly politician was actually someone that like the people of Dublin really liked and so when they you know eventually vacated this property um, it was really like kept up nicely and um, at this point now it's got a bunch of shops and at least one restaurant in it and this is where this is knit is located so um, I just found the history of that building like super fascinating so it's all in my reel if you want to go watch it on Instagram and um, the first day that I went to this is knit I walked in and like immediately like straight in front of the door was this wall of um, Irish hand-dyed yarn and I beelined straight for that wall because I saw some purple yarn and I was like oh my gosh this is really nice so uh, at the time I only picked up one skein of this oh look how pretty it looks on the camera this is Irish artisan yarn and the colorway is called Donegal. Um, it's actually dyed based on a photo that the dyer took of Donegal, which is an area in Ireland. And this is a DK weight yarn. It's 8515 Superwash Merino and Donegal Neps. So my original thought was, okay, I'll make a hat. I've got one skein. This would be really cute, right, as a hat. But then when we went back one of the times, I don't remember which time, um, they had restocked. Basically, I only bought one skein because there were only like four available. And when we went back, there were more on the shelves. <laughs> so uh, I was basically enabled into getting a full sweater quantity, which probably doesn't surprise anyone. Oh, they look so good. I feel like they're not this saturated in like real life so this lighting is really doing some nice things to this yarn but I got six skeins of this my plan is to make the field day cardigan by Ozetta with this yarn and I think it's just like really pretty it'll be a really nice um cardigan I think so I'm really excited about this and I did pick up one other purchase while we were there I saw these and I was like, oh, that's really cool. So this yarn is from River Knits. It's called Chimera. And it's 100%, I don't know if you can read that at all. It's kind of small. 100% British uh, blue face luster wool, spun and hand dyed in the UK. These are 50 gram skeins and the colorway is called Spice Market. So I got two so I would have a full 100 grams. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this at this point. Um, this will likely be like maybe color work in something but I don't know I'm you know not super into color work at the moment but I saw these and I just like couldn't pass them up. I thought they were really really gorgeous. I mean just look at all the colors in there like 
barber poling, I think is the term people use, where it like stripes like a barber pole, candy cane almost. So I loved that. So that was really fun. So some of the other things that we did while we were in Dublin um, as part of the tour is we took a tour of Christchurch Cathedral, uh, which was really interesting to see the building and learn all the history about that. We did a vintage tea bus tour. So it was this, I'll have a photo up, but it was this cute like vintage bus, like double decker bus. And when we first like knew we were going to do this, we were like, how the heck are we going to drink tea and eat like little cakes on a moving bus? Well, the answer is, um, closed cups and all of the tables had cup holders so uh makes sense once you learn that we were all assuming like little like teacups and saucers you know that would have been a disaster honestly with how fast this bus was moving at times um but so that was cool i mean at that point we had i think kind of been in dublin for a little bit um we had already been on our like main coach tour bus that like took us around everywhere and had met our specific tour guide her name was Jane our bus driver his name was John they were so lovely throughout the entire 10 days um, but we had already like learned a bit and had heard a bunch about the history of Dublin just driving around and like getting to one of our next hotels while on our coach so kind of hearing it again and we had done the Christchurch Cathedral tour like the day before or that morning. So we had had a lot of history of Dublin and so on the bus tour, the vintage tea bus tour, it was just more of like the history of Dublin that we had kind of already heard once or twice at this point. But the tea was nice. You could choose tea or hot chocolate and there were all these little like cakes and sandwiches which were uh, really good as well. So it was kind of fun. I got a little dressed up, put on my skirt <laughs> and um, we did that. We had two other yarn events while we, well actually three other yarn events I, I think while we were in Dublin. So one was it was really like a lecture, but when I say lecture, I think a lot of people are just going to assume it was really boring and like a uh, school class. This was probably the most interesting lecture I have ever sat through. The lecture was put on by Vaughn Corrigan and it was about the history of textiles in Ireland. And again, I know that probably doesn't sound like the most exciting thing, but this was super, super interesting just to learn about the history of like not only knitting because knitting is a fairly new art in Ireland, really just about like weaving some of the mills um, and like textiles and fabric in general in Ireland so anyways uh we all kind of like knit through it we all had some like wine or like a drink from the bar and it was super interesting I think a lot of people really liked that talk so that was one of the yarny things that we did we also had a trunk show I was gonna tell you the name of the person who did the trunk show but I don't know how to pronounce it oh my gosh we also had a trunk show from a Tunisian crochet designer. Uh, her name, I believe, is uh, Ava Ni. Nee? I'm going to put this up here. Ava. And that was really cool, too, because a lot of people on the trip have not done Tunisian crochet before so for them I think it was like a total learning experience a lot of people after the trip were like oh my gosh I want to go home and learn all about and learn how to do Tunisian crochet there were a couple of us who had done Tunisian crochet before and for me I have done it before it was really interesting just to see like all the patterns and the textures that she had created um, she's got sweaters she had a bunch of shawls she had mittens so that was really fun and interesting as well. And then the last workshop that we did was with Lisa from This Is Knit and she taught us Mobius knitting. Uh, she gave us a pattern for a cowl 
and taught us how to cast on to create a Mobius. Um, if you don't know, a Mobius is kind of like a tube, but think of like an infinity scarf, how it's it's got that twist in it. Now, if you are just knitting, if you want to knit a Mobius, there's two ways you can do it. You can knit something flat and then, you know, put a twist in it and then seam it up. I think that's how a lot of like those twisted headbands are made or infinity scarves but she taught us an actual way how you can cast on so that you're just fully knitting in the Mobius structure which like mathematically if you think about it that's like very complicated but it was super super cool. The yarn that we were given for this um, to do this workshop, I had to rip mine out. I'm sorry, I I did not have the correct um, cable size, cable length to knit this comfortably, so I had to rip it out. I needed the needles for something else. I may go back and uh, knit it again, or I may make something else with this, but this is the uh, Studio Donegal uh, Soft Donegal. So, it's an Irish yarn, Ireland made yarn. I've got this lovely blue color. This is shade 2BC9584 in case anyone is wondering. Um, but it was a really fun workshop. It was the first time that all of us as a group were just like in like, you know, one of those hotel kind of conference rooms sitting and all knitting together, which was really just nice, just a nice like activity for all of us to do. We were all learning something new. The cast on was like crazy. I don't even know. I don't even know at this point if I could replicate that cast on. <laughs> I would definitely need to watch a video on it. Um, but it was really fun to like meet and talk with Lisa uh, from This Is Knit. If you don't know who she is, she's the she does those videos on um, Instagram, like things I wish I knew when I first started knitting. So that was really fun as well. So I think that's everything that I want to tell you about our time in Dublin. So we started in Dublin. We actually come back to Dublin at the very end for the last day, but I'll get to that at the end. We're still only in the beginning. Oh my gosh. I forgot to tell you about our um, welcome gift. So before the tour had started, um, almost everyone had arrived at this point. This was the night before. We had like a welcome uh, drink and event at the hotel and Rachel and her mom, Drenda, had put together gift bags for everyone and I was going to show you what was in those gift bags. So. I don't know if I can hold all of these things at once. Okay, so first there was a skein of yarn. Everyone had different colors. This is actually, I believe, a new yarn that is either out now or is going to be coming out from Jimmy Bean's Wool. It's called Yarn Citizen. Um, this is their Harmony Fingering Weight in the colorway Deep Sea, and it's actually a 50-50 wool and alpaca yarn made in Peru, and it's really soft. Um, so this was really fun to see in our welcome pack. We also had one of the big things that was in there was a gleaner. I think Rachel was trying to get the like travel mini size, but they sent full sizes. So we all had a full size gleaner to carry around and take care of all of our sweaters with. Um, there was <coughs> pins also from Jimmy Bean's Wool. I got the little blonde one. They were different, uh, different types, and it says uh, "Yarn Babe" on it. So that's cute. I'll put that on one of my um, tote bags or something. There was a tape measure from Thread and Maple, and then probably two of the, at least my favorites. <gasps> oh no! My stitch marker got twisted here. Looks like it got squished. All right, there were two stitch markers 
from Rachel. I know she did a collaboration. I want to say this is from Twin Mountain Handcrafts, I think. Um, but these are um, fuchsia. Purple and pink for um, purple underpants fuchsia. She had been teasing these on her Instagram and... <clears throat> I thought they were going to go live with the cabin collection that she put together with cesium yarn, but they were for the Irish knitting tour, so that was really cute. And then lastly is she got a custom row counter from Twice Sheared Sheep, there we go, with the three leaf clover, little heart clover charm. Which I think is so cute. Um, if you don't know, both Rachel and I are affiliates for Twice Sheared Sheep. So if you are interested in uh, trying out a row counter or any of their other uh, knitting notions, the link is always in the description box um, of my videos and in my Instagram bio. So all of that. Okay, that was everything from the welcome gift. I just wanted to share those with you because I thought they were really fun. Um, <clears throat> all right, I talked about Dublin. Where did we go when we left Dublin? That is a good question. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, oh, probably one of my favorite things of the trip. Okay, we left Dublin and we took our bus our coach and we went to Cushendale Woolen Mills. This was the first of two woolen mills that we visited on our trip that are still running in Ireland so it was really exciting to see both of them. This was so much fun. We got a tour of the mill itself so all of the machinery and the processes that they go through to take sheep wool, clean it, and turn it into yarn, as well as turn it into threads for weaving and to make other textiles. Um, yarn is only one part of their business. They sell a ton of like scarves and blankets and shawls as well. Um, and they also just like make fabric that gets sent out to other companies for them to make things with as well. This was honestly one of my favorite stops. I mean, seeing the process for me as an engineer and like a pro I'm an industrial engineer, I'm a process engineer. So learning the process of things just like makes my brain just go, oh, yeah, this is so exciting. Um, so that was really fun. And then their like shop is just like so peaceful and like very well organized and you walk in and it's just like all of these nice wood tones and all of these very soft blankets and shawls like all like soft lamb wool and mohair and they have this whole shelf just full of yarn cubbies like like mine but like just the whole wall and I think everyone just like walked into a dream so I know we all absolutely loved it. So many people bought blankets and scarves and shawls um, to take home to their families. I did not purchase a blanket while we were there, but I was in love with the mohair boucle yarn that they had there. So this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see. Um, let's see show you some of the strands here see how it's like it's got the boucle little fibers someone someone Heather had actually picked up this cone from one of the baskets and was like holding it for a little bit and then she put it down and she was like Leslie if you like that purple color you should get that cone So I got the cone. Isn't this amazing? I'm so excited. It's uh, 500 grams, so it's about equivalent to five skeins because these are 100 grams. So I've got this cone. As I was standing in line, I was just kind of, you know, looking around again, seeing if there's anything else I needed to add to my cart, and I saw this color. This one, this one is called Cardinal, and this is called Lilac, and I just thought, 
these would look so pretty together. This is about 180 grams, so a little bit less than two skeins. And while I had these, I was like, you know what? Why don't I just get <laughs> two skeins of white to go along with this? And my plan is to make some sort of like striped cardigan. Obviously the cardinal, the dark purple will be the main color. And I actually have more of this white than I do of the lilac. Um, so maybe there'll be like thick stripes of the white with like one little stripe of the purple camera stopped I hit 30 minutes already um, but maybe like one stripe of the lilac purple like interspersed throughout I don't know I haven't figured it out yet I'm not sure what pattern I'm gonna try to mod um, but I really want I've really like the whole time on the trip I was like I really want to cast that on um, but I had shipped all of this home that was one of the really nice things everywhere we went all of the yarn shops all of the places we went to they were like do you want to ship all of this home and pretty much everyone was like yes please I need you to ship everything home because we all bought way too much stuff that would not fit in our suitcases or the extra suitcases slash duffel bags that we all brought with us so I wish you could feel this it's really soft I'm really excited about it and um, honestly, I want to buy more, but I feel like I need to use this up first. Um, the other thing I would say, I'm going to put, I uh, probably have already put in photos of like the shop and the blankets and stuff. Um, these blankets would be, or like a scarf or something, would be an incredible Christmas gift. Uh, for someone in your family, you know, a mom, a daughter, a sister, someone. Um, and if you're looking for yarn gifts, I feel like this is like a very unique yarn. I have not seen mohair boucle like anywhere before. Um, so if you're interested in trying, yeah, I think this these would be really good gifts. One thing also to mention, just in terms of like shopping um, for like gifts and goods in Ireland, is they have this uh, VAT VAT tax value value added tax. I don't know what it's called. Um, but if you're shopping from the U.S. and you're going to be shipping the products back into the U.S., the prices are actually a little bit lower than what you'll see on the website. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, but you will have shipping on top of it, so they kind of even out if you think about it in those terms. Like, minus the VAT tax, but plus shipping kind of evens it out. So, just something to keep in mind. Okay, I loved Cushendale. It was so amazing. I would go back there, tour again, buy everything in the shop again. I loved it so much. Um, after we went to Cushendale, we went out to a sheep farm. Um, we visited Crampton Farm, Suzanne Crampton, and she has a flock of Zwartbull sheep. They're black, like black brown sheep with white um, marking so like some of their legs are white and she also had some alpacas on her farm and she waited for us to get there to feed the sheep and the alpacas so we've got some videos of them like coming into their pen and running for the uh, food troughs um, and then she was also talking to us about just like the history of these sheep um, what they're useful for their uh, fur pelts I don't know. I'm bad at these terms. I'm sorry. Um, and also she was telling us about the alpaca and probably the best part of visiting the farm was learning that you greet alpaca by giving them your head. So you have to like bow to the alpaca and then they will come and like sniff or kiss the top of your head. Um, so a bunch of us got, uh, kissed by alpacas that day that was really fun got some photos of that and um surprisingly 
probably I should not say surprisingly, but uh, she had yarn there for sale as well. So um, it was all just like in, you know, a little, little house that she had on the property. She had all of her yarn. Um, there was yarn from the sheep and there was yarn from the alpacas. I actually got one small 50 gram hank of alpaca yarn can see it's like it's a very very dark brown almost black color which is natural for the alpaca that we saw and it's a light DK Kriya yarn so Kriya means baby alpaca uh, all natural no dyes pure alpaca fibers oh let me read this is the yarn label let me read this to you from the small green fields of Black Sheep Farm, we annually shear our Zwartbull's sheep flock guardian alpaca. These raw fleeces are sent to the border mill in Scotland. Once they're cleaned, carded, and spun, uh, oh, once they're cleaned, carded, and spun into a limited quantity of 100% pure alpaca yarn. Susanna Crampton, Zwartbull's Ireland. So. This is fun. I think I'm going to make a pair of fingerless mitts with this. Either keep them for myself or gift them. I don't know, but it's so cute and it's so soft. I love this. Okay, where do we go to next? The next day we had a pretty touristy day. We visited the Rock of Cashel, uh, which was interesting and toured around there. We also had a tour at the Jameson Distillery in Middleton. Uh, I really liked that. I think a lot of people really liked that. It was, you know, Jameson and Guinness, which we got to later in the trip, um, are two like big pieces of history uh, in Ireland. So again, for me as an engineer, of course, it was nice to see the process how everything gets made and we got to do a tasting of the Irish whiskey and we had very 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 limited time to shop yeah it's gotta be dark And then a taste. There's gonna be quite a smooth finish here and shot it. Shot. Are we doing the whole thing? The whole thing. It's up to you. I don't mind. It's tiny. I don't think I can. I'll drink it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a wimp. Shoot it back. No. Add the cleanser and water. Too refreshing. Oh my God. That was actually the day where our timing was not good. Uh, we didn't have time to finish the like end of the tour at the Jameson facility because we needed to get to Hedgehog Fibers because they were closing at a specific time and they wouldn't stay open so we basically like didn't get to finish at Jameson and also didn't have any time to shop at Hedgehog which was very disappointing but we were able to work it out to go back to Hedgehog the next morning so we did have plenty of time to shop there it was really just Jameson that got cut short so all in all, not terrible, but didn't get a lot of yarn, didn't do a lot of like yarny things that day. But went back the next morning and we all had, we all had plans. We were ready, we were excited, um, and we all kind of went a little bit crazy, I think, in hedgehog fibers. I know I did. Are you ready to see this? Hedgehog fibers was, um, before the trip started, I was most looking forward to visiting Hedgehog, Hedgehog Fibers because I had um, worked with Hedgehog Fibers yarn before and I knew they had some really interesting bases. I 
already had a project plan that I wanted to get yarn for uh, in their Tweety yarn base. So I just like needed to get in there and make sure I was able to get what I wanted before other people grabbed it. Um, our tour guy Jane was really funny. That she She's done these knitting tours before, she's led them, and she was telling us that in past tours, like, people... Okay, neighbor stopped by, I'm back. I was in the middle of my juicy story. Um, that's okay. So our tour guide, Jane, was telling us that in the past when she had visited Hedgehog Fibers, like, people had almost gotten into fistfights over yarn there like there was a lot of like shoving elbows being thrown and we were like oh my gosh let's not be that group but also we were like joking like prepared to fight you for the yarn that I want um but no I think everybody was able to get what they wanted um they also had the option where you could get custom dyes if they didn't have enough available of a color that you wanted so I know at least one person did that but <sighs> let me show you everything that I got at Hedgehog Fibers it's a lot I um admittedly went a little crazy I did have a 30% off code so you may be aware like if you bring in or you send to hedgehog fibers yarn scraps uh if they are a certain weight you can get a 10 20 or 30 percent off discount code um rachel and some of the other people on the tour brought like a ton of scraps so there were a couple of us that had 30 percent off discount codes a couple people i think had 20 percent off um so we were kind of being strategic and uh, I think they knew and I don't think they cared about the people who had 30% off discount codes buying things for other people so that they could also get the 30% off codes. Um, and I just like saw a lot of yarn there that I really liked. I was thinking about projects like on the spot that I wanted to make. I had a list going into the trip of projects that I wanted to make and so um, I don't regret this at all. I mean, I'm so excited about all of this yarn so let me show you. First, since I just want to put it down, um, they have these bags. <laughs> Isn't it so pretty? Okay, these are like hand dyed, like hand speckled silk bags. The lining on the inside and the straps are nylon and they're like dyed specifically to look like colorways, yarn colorways that they have. So this one is supposed to look like Oyster. Um, I really liked this one because it also looks very similar to the Sophie shawl that I made in Hedgehog Fibers yarn in the colorway Taffy. Um, and I was wearing that while we were in the store. I was able to show Rose my scarf. I was like, look, this is my scarf. I made it in Taffy. And she was like, oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Good job. And I was like, Rose, this bag looks like Taffy. And she's like, oh, it does. It's Oyster, but it looks like taffy so um they have these in the shop i know i believe they were like 95 euro but they're hand dyed they're very nice quality the only thing is they don't have a closure so it is more of like i would say like a basket bag maybe something that you would want to keep at home to like put things in but it's a really good size um i think i could get at least four definitely at least four cakes on the bottom of this and then stack them and it's got two big pockets on one side and I think I'm going to use this I really want to start the sweet shop blanket so I think I'm going to use this as like the bag that holds all of the yarn for that but it's got the little hedgehog fiber logo here um and it's got like a flat bottom so I'm so someone like dragged me over. These are on like the other side of the shop. And uh, my friend Heather dragged me over and she was like, Leslie, come look at these bags. And I was like, Ugh, oh my gosh. And there was another one that I liked and then I was digging through them all and I saw this one and it was pink, like light pink. And I was like, 
Mm, this is the one. This is the one that we're getting. So, love that. Okay, let me show you the yarn. Well, so got, uh, it's almost like a postcard. And I got some stickers. I actually have like a few of these. I know. I already put one in my notebook, so I've got. And I had another one. I think I got like four stickers. There might be more in there too. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So the yarn that I knew before even going into the shop that I wanted was this Tweety, purple Tweety in the colorway Lullaby because I had seen, sorry Nordlin has a ribbed hat pattern that she used this yarn specifically to make. I think it's called the Sailor Beanie and I was like, I want that yarn. I want to make that hat. Um, honestly, I love this colorway so much. Like, I really want enough to make like a cardigan or a sweater. I think this would be a gorgeous cardigan yarn. So at some point in my life, there might be a Tweety purple Tweety cardigan uh, in my life. But this is the this is the yarn that they use the yarn scraps in. So you can see all of the different Tweety bits are different colors. No two skeins are alike because even if they like use the same batch of tweed they're going to get different colors in it so it's just they're really exciting and so the uh the composition of this 50 percent falkland merino wool 37.5 percent recycled wool and 12.5 percent hedgehog fiber thread waste um i don't know if you can see also there's like tonality to like the purple also it's not doing a very good job at focusing I don't know but it's just a really really pretty yarn so I'm going to make the sailor beanie with this the pattern she holds a strand of purple mohair with it as well which I wasn't able to find a like solid purple mohair that I like so I'm either not going to hold that strand or try to find something else. I haven't fully decided yet, but sticking in the theme of purple, I got two skeins of the sock yarn, which is their fingering weight, 90-10 merino wool nylon base in the colorway Purr. Purr. Um, and I got two skeins of this. I'm going to make a tank top with this. So either the mini mock neck or there's a pattern, I think it's called Ribbed to Your Measure. I forget who the designer is, but that's been on my list for a while. Um, so it might be that one. I haven't decided which tank top pattern I'm going to make with it, but I think this colorway is gorgeous. Okay, there's more. There's a whole other bag here. <laughs> I got a free mini skein. Because, you know, when you buy four, five, six, seven, eight, nine skeins of yarn and a bag, yeah, sure, let's throw in a free mini skein. It's just a little speckled. They call their, um, like, one of a kind. They call them potluck colorways. So this is just a potluck colorway. Uh, this is just going to go in my mini skein stash and will probably be used for something at some point. I don't know what. I got these three yarns, blue themed yarns. Um, okay, these two are in the same um, sock yarn base. This one is called Electric. I got this because it's like a LA Dodgers blue. And this one is called Dragonfly. And I really liked just the different uh, colors in this variegated. It's kind of got that Dodger blue feel, but with this um, orangey and purple magenta bits in here. I think it's really pretty. My thought is to make hats with these. And then I got 
a darker kind of navy blue this one is called ink and this is actually on their oh so fine base I'm sorry about the zoom here <laughs> I'm trying to show you everything and it's not zooming quick enough um, this is a hundred percent merino wool and it's very very soft so I think I'm gonna make a baby hat with this one so these three hats probably <sighs> probably gifts Hopefully my brother's not watching this. <laughs> um, okay, and then these are the last two skeins that I got. This is their alpaca boucle base. And these are two potluck colorways. So they were like one of a kind, um, though they are very similar to each other, which is why I grabbed them. And they had a sample in the store of this cardigan that's made with one strand of the alpaca boucle. The smaller sizes, um, you could only, you could get away with only one skein. This is 620 meters in 100 grams. So there's a lot of yardage here. It's 66% alpaca, 34% silk. Let me tell you the name of the cardigan and I'll have the link to the Ravelry page down below. This is a Hedgehog Fibers um, pattern and it was a it's a free pattern as well which I didn't realize until I uh, looked at it on Ravelry and I was like, oh, it's free. This is exciting. Um, here it is. It's called Dust Bunny and it's just like a very sheer cardigan that I think will look really cute in these like bright colors and I can just see myself wearing it with a tank top underneath, you know, in the fall, in the spring and I'm really excited about it. This is, um, this yarn is very similar to this yarn. It's got the same boucle like structure, but the hedgehog fibers is alpaca and this is mohair, obviously. So, yeah, isn't that exciting? It's so pretty. I think I will like, alternate skeins um, because I'm gonna need both of them oh I was saying the smallest the smaller sizes you can get away with one skein I'm like a medium size I can do two skeins the largest sizes uh, this is a size inclusive pattern I believe you need three skeins for but like one to three skeins for a cardigan sign me up okay um Yeah, now that I'm looking at, okay, I have a little bit more yarn to show you, um, but the biggest, like, question going around the bus, like, in the hotel whenever we were hanging out is, like, what's your favorite thing you've purchased so far? What's your favorite thing you've got? And every time I would talk about my cone, but looking at this today, too, I am so excited for this. So honestly, I, I don't know if I can make a decision between like this sweater quantity and this sweater quantity, but I really want to cast these on really soon. <sighs> but we got to do after I have been waiting to get over this cold so I could talk to you about Ireland and so that I can film everything else that I need to film. We need to do a podcast episode. I want to do a whole yarn stash reorganization because I need to get all of this yarn that I'm showing you today into my yarn stash. It's a lot, okay? <laughs> it's a lot. Um, but yeah, basically, sorry for the dog drinking water. Um, I can't cast on any of these things right now because I've got other stuff on my needles that you haven't seen yet that I need to show you. If you're on Instagram, you've seen them, so it's not really a surprise. I just try to keep things in order for YouTube. After we left Hedgehog Fibers, we went to Blarney Castle. This was probably one of my favorite non-knitting stops on the tour. Um, I could have spent so much time there, but when you're on a tour like this, that's probably one of the biggest downsides is you just don't have enough time at any one place because we're on a tight schedule. But um, my main goal while we were at Blarney Castle was to kiss the Blarney Stone and I did that. It was fun. It was a little scary. 
if you haven't done this before, so you like, you, you stand in line and like while you're in line, you're walking through just the halls and the stairways and the hallways of this old castle. And so to get up to the very, very top where the Blarney Stone is, you have to go up, climb up this stair spiral staircase. And as you're getting to the top, the like stairwell is getting narrower and narrower because, you know, and the stairs are getting steeper and steeper. Uh, this was a protection mechanism for back in the day when the people of the castle needed to guard themselves from invasions um but you're also in line so you're like in this claustro <laughs> a little bit cla claustrophobic space just waiting for the people ahead of you to move then you get up to the very top of the castle and it's like windy and you're just looking out and you're like oh we're really high up and then you're watching people lay on the ground the floor of the castle over an opening you have to like grab these bars behind you and pull yourself backwards and you're like oh my gosh this is crazy but i was really excited to do it i did it you got to pull yourself really hard in order to actually like lean back and kiss the stone and the guy tells you kiss the bottom stone and i'm like yeah yeah sure whatever uh, I don't think I kissed the right stone because that didn't even like register in my brain until we had left and I was like oh he said to kiss the bottom stone I don't think I made it like I don't think I tilted back far enough to get to the bottom stone but you know it's whatever um, but the grounds of Blarney Castle were just so beautiful as well they had a poison garden that a lot of people were, were really interested in seeing uh, where they grew poisonous plants so we walked through that that was really cool um, and they had a big gift shop and a big food hall restaurant type place as well where we had lunch um, again <clears throat> I could have spent a lot of time at Blarney Castle. If we ever go back, um, I mean, I would love to kiss the Blarney Stone again, but um, I would probably want to walk around a little bit more too. And that was the night that we first made our way to the Lake Hotel, which was one of my favorite hotels on the trip. It was so gorgeous, situated right on a lake in uh, Killarney National Park. There was there is a castle, like castle ruins, just right outside the hotel. Um, the hotel was like, well originally it was built as like a mansion to overlook the ruins of this castle and then it was later turned into a hotel by the family, added on to, it is what it is today. But it was just so gorgeous and like walking out there in the mornings or in the late afternoons to just like see the castle and like go up to it you could go up to it um and then there was a view of the lake beyond it it was very peaceful and it was a nice place to just relax we were at that hotel for like three nights which was really nice because previously there were a couple days where we were only at the hotel for one night which just felt very like go 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 we didn't really get a chance to get settled anywhere um so this was a nice place to like stop and relax we had basically a free day one of the days while we were there it was very nice um so a couple of the other yarny things that we did while we were staying at the lake hotel while we were in um killarney area was we visited carrie woolen mills we had a workshop with uh carol feller and what was the last shop oh we had another workshop with liz spillane so let me talk to you about visiting Carrie Woolen Mills because this was also one of my favorite things. Um, the mill tours in general, I just loved. Again, I love to see the process. I love to see, like, when we were at Carrie Woolen Mills, the machines were running and they were loud and there were a lot of them. They had a couple different barns that everything was in. Um, they had just piles and piles and 
piles and racks and stacks of wool that had already been dyed so they had all this like yellow wool fluff just like flying everywhere that's what they were processing while we were there but you could also see the bags they had of green and like magenta and blue like bright bright colors which was really cool and then they also had a um, mill dog and her name was Millie which was very appropriate but she was just like running around getting pets from everyone <laughs> just going into the buildings which was really funny and really cute but that was a really really fun shop as well. We were really excited to shop at Carrie Woolen Mills because the, we knew that they had 200 gram hanks of wool and I honestly like wasn't sure if I was going to buy any of these because for me the biggest thing with the Irish wool is it's very rustic and it's called Aran wool so it's like a worsted to an Aran weight base which is really heavy um, wearing anything higher than worsted weight for me I just don't get wear out of it here in Southern California um, and even worsted weight is pushing it like I've got my worsted weight cal cardigan I think as a cardigan it works really well now I am making a worsted weight sweater right now um, we'll see how much wear I get out of it but I'm really enjoying making it right now so we're not we don't need to talk about that but I really, I knew I didn't really need to get a sweater quantity of this like Aran wool one because it's a little bit rustic. I knew it would be hard for me to wear next to skin, and I knew I wouldn't get a lot of wear out of it. But I saw these two colors and I just couldn't pass them up. So, well, really, this was the first one I saw, and I was like, I love that dark green. Um, I saw some of this. They were processing some green on the machines while we were in there and so I saw some of this as well that was being made and I just loved the color. Um, you can see that like overall the wool is dark green but you can see also if you look closer all of the little almost like tweety bits are all of these different colors and these are like this is the wool that we saw in like the first building we were in like the yellows you can see the bright blue the magenta red so all of that kind of goes into the wool the like main color that they're making which is just so cool um you show you the label so Aaron wool from Carrie Woolen Mills what else does it say? Please buy enough to complete garment. Later dyes may vary in shade. It's 100% pure new wool. This color that I have is green fleck and it's 200 grams, about 365 yards total. So look, I could make a hat with this. I was thinking maybe some Sunday socks, although 
<laughs> who knows if I'll ever cast on socks again but that's what I'm thinking and while I was waiting in line uh my friend Faith was like Leslie did you see this color this is your color and I was like I did not see that color and she gave this to me and so obviously I had to buy it um it's this like purpley pink color that is called rambling rose and it's gorgeous so again I can make a hat out of this I can make Sunday socks um who knows honestly what I will get up to with these two ginormous hanks of yarn I don't know they might just sit on top of my yarn stash there for me to look at forever who knows who knows okay I'm just throwing everything on my bed I gotta take a photo of everything um, when I'm done just to show I haven't taken a photo of everything all together yet so Anyways, uh, while we were there, I also got two pairs of socks already made. I loved the dark green color. Um, so these are nice. This, this is, these are going to be a gift. So uh, if you know who you are getting these, you did not see those. I've already um, opened my pair and have worn them. Um, also, somebody had this. <sighs> In their hands and I was like McKenna where did you get that I need one and she was like there's another one over there and so I went and got this this is a scarf you see Carrie Woolen Mills and I love this because you can see there's some boucle in here and you can see all of the the other different color threads that they used um, similar to Cushendale Yarn is only one piece of the business at Carrie Woolen Mills. They also make textiles and they make blankets. And um, the reason I didn't buy any blankets from Cushendale was because they were all mohair. And I was really worried that if Joel felt it, he would be like, this is itchy. I don't like this. But I saw these two at Carrie and I was like, I think we can get away with this. And so I got them. So I really loved this scarf. Um, I am, I probably won't ever wear it as a scarf. I think what I'm actually going to do with this is put this on top of my um, yarn shelf and have it drape over kind of like as like a runner um, and give, give myself some color over here because I really like it. But <clears throat> This was just like a really good example for me of like the weaving that they do um, in the shop and um, I loved obviously this pink color so I had to get this and then the last thing which was actually the very first thing that I grabbed when we went into the shop my group was like the last group to go into the shop I think I was one of the last people to go into the shop so everyone had already like I feel like ransacked the <laughs> yarn shelves um, but we were, when we were in one of the buildings during the tour, we saw them making this blanket that was these blues, pinks, and yellow colors. And we went into the shop. I looked, they had a table with a lot of stuff on top of it. And I looked at the shelf below and I saw this blanket and was, it was the exact same as to what they were making on the loom at the time. And I grabbed it and I was like, this is coming home slash being shipped to me it's so gorgeous it's all the wool that they mill there they made this blanket there um this is one of my one of my favorite purchases definitely my favorite non-yarn purchase and it's a huge <laughs> It's a huge blanket, but isn't it just so stunning? Like, not only the colors, but I mean, really just the colors and the blanket itself. I love it so much. It's very warm. Uh, when I got home, the package wasn't here yet when I got home from the trip. It arrived a couple of days after I got home and I wasn't feeling well and I got my blanket out and it smelled good and I just wrapped myself up in it and I was like, I shed a little tear because I missed being in Ireland. I missed all of the fun things that we did, um, but I had this blanket to remember my trip.
Oh, now I'm gonna shed another tear. I miss it so much. I want to go back. Uh, okay, I'm almost done showing you acquisitions. Um, okay, that was one of the yarn activities, knitting related activities that we did while we were in Killarney. On one of the days when we were driving around Killarney, there were a couple of times where um, we were on our own for lunch. So we were in between, you know, activity in the morning, activity in the afternoon, and in the middle we would stop for lunch sometimes we were all eating at the same place and a couple times we were in like these small towns and we were on our own so we could shop um and we could go get lunch sometimes we only had like an hour so <laughs> for me i was hungry i was like i need to go get lunch um and one of the other times we had almost two hours so we were able to do a little bit of shopping and get lunch in one of those um small towns i think this was um kildare i think we went into a shop and right in the front of the shop they had baskets of yarn <sighs> this is so like it was just so interesting and so weird and so exciting that you can just walk into a shop it was kind of like a gift shop type store but it was like a big shop where they had you know hats and scarves and blankets and gloves and mittens and all sorts of just things but they also just carry yarn they just have yarn available in all of these shops anyways uh so i i just bought some yarn it wasn't even a yarn specific shop and i bought some yarn this is um, Atlantic Coast Yarns, spun in Ireland. It's Sonus Irish Erin, 100% wool, 164 yards, 100 grams. So again, it's that like worsted Erin weight. Uh, I only got two skeins. Again, I don't need to make a sweater out of this. Uh, who knows what it'll be? Hat, socks, something, gift for someone, I don't know. But it's this gorgeous purple color that I loved. Um, and this is actually milled in Donegal. This is, uh, or maybe not milled, but it says Donegal Yarns. This is part of the Donegal Yarn brand. The genuine Donegal is what it says on here. So, anyways, just wanted to share that. That was fun. Um, yeah, we just went into that shop. We were shopping. Um, while we were there, I was, like, walking around, and one of the store associates walked by me, and we started chatting about my scarf. I was wearing my Sophie shawl, and she was like, oh, did you make that? And I was like, yeah, I made that. I made this sweater. And she was like, oh, are you a knitter? And I'm like, yeah, I'm here on a knitting tour. Like, all those people over there, I'm with them. We all knit all of our sweaters. And she was like, oh, my gosh, like, I know how to crochet. I'm just learning how to knit. And so we were all chatting with her, and um, at the end, as we were, like, checking out, she was like, oh, I really want to come on this tour with you. And we were like, like, come come join us we got seats on the bus so that was really fun just to like talk to someone who like worked there who lives there who was like really excited about what we what we were doing and uh we were excited about it as well so um okay one of the other workshops that we went to was with liz spillane um this was a really interesting workshop. It was at her home, and she's got a lovely, beautiful home. And the workshop, what we were knitting on, what she kind of taught us how to knit, were these cable mittens. Um, I made one, sort of. <laughs> uh, this is, you're supposed to fold it, and then when you, oh, it goes on this hand. When you seam it up, you leave a little hole for your thumb it's like a fingerless mitt like this which it is really cute like this but the kind of special exciting part of this workshop um and of this knit is you actually are not supposed to bind off on the top you're supposed to continue with this like art yarn and we were all able to go and she had <clears throat> seemed like a hundred different yarn threads and some of them were sparkly some of them were boucle some of them were mohair some of them were chunky and we could create our own basically thread 
uh, out of the colors that she had there to like go with the yarn that we had for our mittens and you're supposed to cut off like two to three inch pieces of this and tie it around your yarn here and then knit it into the top of the mitten so the top of the mitten would have this like fluffy like art yarn barf texture almost to it now a lot of people like this isn't the style <laughs> of most of us like I don't think many of us really wanted to fully incorporate this into the mitten like we wouldn't really wear it very often um, and I was one of the last I was like pretty slow at knitting this compared to like everyone else I was the, one of the last ones to go in and put my color choices together but I had so much fun making this like I loved this I love all of these colors together it's like magenta -y red with like the autumn like oranges and there's like a purple sparkly yarn in here there's a uh, fluffy yarn in here that's really soft um, so I loved this and I really just wanted to keep this as a treasure and I don't know maybe I'll make like pom pom like a pom 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 garland or some sort of decoration with this but I was like I'm not gonna cut any of this off and put it in my mitten because I want to use it for something else and basically by the time we were done with the class anyway I had just like I had just gotten to the part where I would have started adding this in and so there wasn't really enough time for me anyway to do that but that was really fun I'm really excited about this who knows what will happen with it but I'm thinking some sort of decoration okay so that was a cool workshop and then um, one of the last knitting workshops that we had was with Carol Feller and this was um, while we were at the Lake Hotel we had this in the morning and then the rest of the day was like our free day and she is the one who taught us all about cabling without a cable needle and just like the properties of cables in general and we got a free skein of her yarn which is this yarn. It's called Nua Worsted by uh, Stolen Stitches by Carol Feller. And this yarn, oh my gosh, it feels so good. Um, it's a 60-20-20 merino wool yak linen base. Like, I want to make a full sweater out of this yarn. It is so soft. And we um, got a book of two patterns. One was like a coffee cozy, like just a, basically a flat strip that you can put it around your coffee cup. Um, and it was cabled. <clears throat> And then there was another pattern in the book for fingerless mitts. And during the class, I actually started knitting the Coffee Cozy. I didn't get very far into it, so I actually ripped it out. And on my travel day back home, I cast on the fingerless mitts because I thought they were really cute. And I finished one um, during my travel day, and I finished the other one while I was sick. So kind of have a finished object to show you. I will also show these again on my next podcast, but I thought these were really, they're just like really cute and the yarn is really soft and this is what we learned in the workshop. This was the first, this, is, this was the only uh, workshop knit that I actually completed and like didn't well, to be fair, I did rip it out first, but then I did complete it later, um, and they're just really pretty, so I love them, um, and while we were there, she came to us, and she brought a lot more yarn, and so um, I bought one other skein. Did I buy this there, or did I have it shipped to me? I think I bought it I bought it there I bought one more skein um, I think I'm gonna knit the mitts pattern again uh, as a gift for someone I don't know if I'll have time to knit them before Christmas I would like to that's the dream but um, I really liked this color is called cerebellum and uh, it's really pretty let me see this dark purple color is called <gasps> cafe flamingo isn't that nice? 
So this is a 50 gram, yeah, this is a 50 gram Hank, and the mitten pattern is called the Peter Swell Mitts. Um, I'll put the link down below to the Ravelry, they are on Ravelry, and um, if you're interested, um, this is how much yarn I had left, so they use almost a full skein of the 50 gram yarn, which is, uh, Really nice. So. Wow, okay. Honestly, that is um, all of the yarn. Everything that I have bought. There were a couple other like non-knitting related activities that we did. Um, but I'll tell you about the very last day. Because I think that was um, the last, for me, exciting thing that we did. So, at this point we had driven back into Dublin. We were staying at a, a new hotel, kind of right in the city. The beginning of the last day, we had a trip. It was like a two hour bus ride planned um, out to Sandra Coote's Crafts of Ireland studio. And a lot of people <laughs> at this point were very tired and didn't want to spend two hours on the bus, which I can totally understand. For me, I was like, this is the last day, like, we're going. I'm I'm not giving up my last day here. Um, I've already been in Dublin. I don't need to go back like anywhere in Dublin. So I'm doing what is on the plan for the tour. So there were six of us that decided to go out of like 24 people. Everyone else decided to stay in Dublin. And we had the best time. This um, Crafts of Ireland studio was so cool um it's a really big space full of a bunch of like tables so if you you know had like a much much larger group everyone had a place to sit but in the back she had another room that was like really her studio space where she had she had a line of like seven sock knitting machines which was amazing they all had different socks on them she had um needle felting uh a ton of projects that she had made like up on the walls as well as like a drum carter for the uh, fiber a drum carter for the fiber and she just had all of these different crafts and it was just so amazing we were originally there for um, a butter making demonstration which is like not yarn based at all so but it was really cool. Um, she since, since since there were only six of us, she took us into this back room and she basically just gave us a little tour and talked to us about all of the crafts that she does. And it was so amazing. Um, she gave us a little demonstration of her sock machines. I got to crank a bit on her sock machine, which was really fun. Hopefully I didn't mess anything up, but I don't think I did. That was my first time ever cranking a circular sock machine. And then at the end, she gave us the butter making demonstration. She had baked fresh bread uh, for us um, before we got there. And then she had, you know, just a bottle of cream. We put it into the mixer, mixed it until it was ready. She showed us how to like take it from there. You gotta like hit it with these wooden like paddles. I don't know, you just like spank the butter. I don't know, it was really funny. Um, and then we had homemade butter and homemade bread as a little snack with coffee and tea. And it was so nice. Making bread is scientific because you have to have acid and alkaline. <laughs> She had a little field of sheep right outside. There was a hill, a little mound, and there was one, there were a couple of sheep on the hill, and there was one right at the top. It was just like the perfect little day with a very small group of people. And then 
we left there and in the afternoon we went to the Guinness storehouse to do the Guinness storehouse tour which was a lot it was very very crowded um that is like one of the top tourist attractions in all of Europe so it was extremely crowded it's a self-guided tour up like each it's like a seven-story building so as you go up there's like different information about how they make the beer the ingredients um the marketing just like the Guinness fa family history in general so it was all really interesting um if I had had more time <sighs> look we were there on a Tuesday afternoon you would think it shouldn't be that busy on a Tuesday afternoon. It was packed. But if we had had more time and if I had been able to like kind of get in between all of the like bigger groups of people to like check out more stuff, I think it would have been really nice. But I kind of just um, took the advice of our tour guide Jane and she said just go straight up to the top and get your free beer and enjoy it. <laughs> And I tried to check out some of the like stuff on the bottom floors. Um, I did go shopping first before we got in there. And um, then I just got overwhelmed with all the people. And so I went straight up to the top and I got a beer. Um, that was my first Guinness in Ireland. I'm not a fan of Guinness here in the US. I don't like dark beer. And I waited specifically to try Guinness at the Guinness storehouse while we were in Ireland. Um, after the fact, I was like, oh, I should have had this <laughs> while we were here the whole time. It was so much better than it is in the U.S. Um, they also had another beer on tap. It was a lighter beer. I think it was a lager, maybe. Um, I got someone else's drink ticket, so I was able to try that one as well. It was really good, too. So that was our last day in... Ireland. We had a um, goodbye dinner at an Italian restaurant that night and the next day a bunch of people left in the morning and then my um, I was on the bus leaving in the early afternoon and that was it. Got home, was sick for <laughs> over a week. Um, oh I mentioned in one of my earlier videos uh, I really wanted to get an Ireland sweatshirt. I got my Ireland sweatshirt from the Temple Bar that I visited a couple times the first couple days I was there. And yeah, that's, that's it. Oh, you know what? I didn't tell you about the Lyrath Hotel. So every couple nights we were at a different hotel. I talked to you about the Lake Hotel, loved it. The other hotel that we loved was called Lyrath Estates. It was just like a gorgeous estate home turned into hotel. Best meal I had on the trip was the dinner we had there and it was so gorgeous. But yeah, let's see. I know this video is really long, um, but I'll just give you my final thoughts. Um, I loved it. Absolutely trip of a life. 100% want to go back to Ireland. 100% want to do a knitting tour again. I think Rachel is working on planning another one for next year. So keep your eyes peeled here on my Instagram, my YouTube, and over on Rachel's Instagram and YouTube for more information about that. But It was amazing. I mean, not only the places that we went to, the workshops we got to take part in, but the people who came on the trip, meeting everyone and just sitting and chatting with them at the hotel. We had like knit nights almost every night. We were all knitting on the bus. Like that was honestly the best part. Um, chatting about Instagram and you know all the things happening on Instagram and people that we all knew from Instagram that like other people didn't know you know it was kind of like a big like meet and greet sort of deal there but I know some of these people that I met will be like my knitting friends for life and you can't beat that you know it was really truly amazing 100% would do it all again. So I'm getting uh, teary eyed here just thinking about it. But that's it. I'm sure there's a ton that I forgot to tell you about, but 
at this point um that's it thank you for watching i will be back with a lot more videos. Like I said, we got podcasts. I got new cast-ons to show you. I gotta rearrange my whole yarn stash. I've been dying to do a vlog, so stay tuned. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Go follow me on Instagram over at Nick California. And um, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.